What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be covering the best vlogging lens for the Canon M50. I'm going to go over three different options and then at the end I'm going to pick one. So if you want to see that, make sure that you get to the end of the video where I will be telling you which one is my pick. Now what I want you guys to notice is that as I am talking about the specific lens, you should see footage of me walking around with that specific lens so that you can get an idea for what the lens looks like, the quality of the video as well as the stabilization. So keep that in mind as I go over the pros and cons of these lenses. All right guys so the first lens that we are going to try is the canon efm 15 to 45 millimeter lens now this is the kit lens but if you did not get this with the camera it's 299 dollars which is actually quite pricey for what you're getting in my opinion and that's the first con for this lens some of the pros for this lens are the fact that it has image stabilization, it has a maximum aperture of f3.5, and it also only weighs 130 grams. And ideally for vlogging, you want a light lens, and this is actually perfect for that. This is extremely light, especially compared to the other lenses that we're going to look at. Now, another con with this lens is the quality is not the best. It's actually nice, but it's not as good as the Sigma 16 millimeter lens, for example. And again, when comparing it to the Sigma, the maximum aperture is only 3.5. So in that case, it's a negative, but normally that can actually be seen as a pro two, especially in this comparison when compared to the 10 to 18 millimeter, which has a maximum aperture of 4.5. Now in this case, I decided to set the focal length to 16 millimeters because what I wanted to do was actually have all the lens in the same focal length with the same settings with regards to ISO and aperture, etc. So I recorded all these videos for the three lenses at an aperture of 4.5 because that is the lowest that the EFS 10 to 18 millimeter lens goes so that we can kind of get an accurate picture for what each lens can give you at the same focal length with the same settings on the camera. But make no mistakes, when comparing this lens to the 10 to 18 millimeter, it does get the win in terms of the aperture. All right now, so let's transition to the 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Before we move on to the next lens, I wanna quickly cover something. I've noticed about 98% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. I would really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to the channel. If I have popped up on your feed a couple of times and you like the content that I'm giving you, please consider subscribing to the channel or at the very least hit the like button. So please support your small channels on YouTube. Anyways, let's go on to the next lens. So as I mentioned before, I made sure to keep all of the lenses at 16 millimeters in terms of the focal length. However, let me show you real quick what happens if I dial that in to say 10 to 12 millimeters. You get a lot more background to view and that's critical and it's important if it's something that when you're vlogging, you want to make sure that people can see where you're at, get the most wide angle of that location, then this is a lens that will work better than the other two. Now let's get into the pros and cons of this lens. Now with regards to the pro, this is a stabilized lens. The weight is somewhere in the middle. It weights 240 grams. So we can kind of make that a pro. And the biggest pro for this one is the focal length, which it has the widest angle. And it also has a manual focus option so that you can have full control with the lens and use the focus ring. Now with regards to the cons, this has an aperture, a maximum aperture of 4.5 and the price, while normally it's not a con, it's only $279, you will need to use this with the Canon adapter, which is $159, making the total $438. Now this lens sits somewhere in the middle because it's sort of light, not as heavy as the Sigma lens, but it also has stabilization just like the kit lens where the Sigma lens does not have any. Now let's switch over to the Sigma 16 millimeter lens. Now what you're going to notice with this lens is that it's the most beautiful and well built lens. The quality of this is also spectacular. This is probably my favorite Canon lens, but we're doing a review on the best blogging lens. So this might not be it. Let's go over some of the pros and cons. This has an aperture of f1.4, which is the best out of all these lenses. It has the best picture quality, the best build quality, and also has manual focus as an option. 
Now for the cons, it does not have stabilization and it weights 405 grams and the price is $399, so it's the most expensive. Now what I want you to notice here with the lens is, first of all, the background is blurry, but also look how much light is coming into the picture. Now this can also be an issue, as you can see in this footage here, I just look completely washed out. Now this happened because it's bright outside and I set the aperture to 1.4 and did not have a variable filter to control the light being let in. So once you use a variable filter, you can see you can control how much light you let in or out and it actually gives you a wonderful picture which still allows you to have that blurry background while keeping that beautiful picture that this lens gives you. Now you can view that as being an additional purchase and being a con, but in this case I'm not going to because it's not that expensive and it's something that anyone who's going to buy a lens with this type of aperture knows that they're going to have to buy it. Now there are other ways that you can control that by changing the shutter speed and playing around with the different settings on the camera, but I'm not that advanced with cameras yet, so I just went ahead and bought the VND filter. All right, so let's briefly just summarize what all of these lens are capable of doing and what some of the pros and cons are. With the Canon EFS 10 to 18 millimeter lens, you're gonna get a maximum aperture f4.5, which is decent. You're gonna get stabilization, which is awesome. It weighs 240 grams, which could be a pro or a con, depending on what lens you're comparing it to. The price is 279. However, in order to use this, you will need to buy the Canon adapter, which itself costs about $159. So you have to factor that in. Now, that is not something that should be really a problem because if you're planning to stick with Canon, then that opens up a world of options for you for the Canon M50 with other lenses that you can buy and adapt, which actually makes your Canon M50 even a lot better. Now, let's talk about the EFM 15 to 45 lens that comes with this, which is known as the kit lens. So the maximum aperture on that is f.35, which is decent. You can definitely get some blur using that lens. If you get close enough to the lens and have your background be far enough, you can get some decent results using that. Now, one of the biggest strengths or pros for this is its weight. It's only 130 grams, and this also provides stabilization. And if you were actually to buy this outside of buying it with the camera, it'll run you around $299 right now. The final lens is the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. And as you guys have probably seen in the video by now, that lens just has a crispier look to it. It just looks sharper. The colors look more vivid. The drawbacks with this is it does not have stabilization. So if you turn on the stabilization, digital stabilization on the camera, it should help. Another con for this lens is its weight. It's about 405 grams, which is a significant amount more than the kit lens and even a significant amount more than the 10 to 18 millimeter lens. However, that is canceled out by the fact that because it's made out of such high quality materials, this also feels premium where the others do not. It just feels a lot better. And when you hold it in your hand and just grab it, it just feels right. That's what she said. <laughs> Moving on. My pick for the best vlogging lens for this camera is going to be the 10 to 18 millimeter. This just feels like it sits right in the middle between the other two lenses. It's light enough to where you can vlog for a long amount of time. And it also has stabilization, which the Sigma does not have. And it is also cheaper than the Sigma lens. So because of those reasons, I feel like that is the best vlogging lens. Now, if you want to watch more with regards to camera equipment or lighting gear, etc., my last video, which you'll see here at the top, was a video about lighting and how you could get the maximum out of your camera with regards to not having to upgrade the camera, but changing things like lighting around and using camera settings to improve your video quality. You can check that out. It's going to be at the top. At the bottom, YouTube is going to recommend the best video for you. If you've made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you. I appreciate it. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button. Please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. And check me out on social media on Twitter and Instagram at UrbanBDKNY. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.